The CIA triad is a security concept that all organizations should follow. The C stands for confidentiality, which the information should only be read by authorized individuals. An example that that can be done through is encryption. Integrity, that ensures that the data is unaltered. That could be an example of a hash or checksum. And availability, that information is available when you need it. So let's say you go to the Amazon uh, website, you need to make sure that you can access that and it's available and the website's not down. So here's an example of what the checksum looks like. It's a simple error detection method used to assure the data integrity. So at the end of the frame, they have what's called the cyclical redundancy check. And it has that number counter and it matches up with all the data here. And if it's the same, it knows that all the information is the same and nothing has changed. Now, accountability, that is a concept where the responsibility of individuals or entities to account for their actions, decisions, and policies related to the information security. So how do you create accountability? Well, an example could be it includes logs, which shows when the user logged in, uh, which user logged in, and what they viewed or, or changed. Now, with privacy, that is the right of the individuals or organization to control the collection, use, and dissemination of information about themselves. So an example of that would be HIPAA. They say, hey, you cannot share their health information, and so individuals have rights to their privacy as well as organizations. Now, non-repudiation, that is the person is who they say they are. So when you're connecting to uh, over the internet, you're not 100% sure, so you need to be able to prove without a doubt that that's the person that you're talking to. So the non-repudiation concept is the person is who they say they are, and they cannot deny the authenticity of their signature of the sending of a message. Uh, this is achieved through the cryptographic technique, such as a digital signature. Or if you've ever been to a website and it says, hey, this website is not trusted, maybe that digital certificate was expired or the keys were revoked, so that non-repudiation for all the other websites, they're proving who they say they are. Now, a security concept questions. While reviewing the access logs, you notice that a staff member in the billing department has been accessing patients' medical records that are unrelated to their job responsibilities. When you confront this staff member, they claim they were curious and didn't think it was a big deal since they work in the same organization. According to the privacy principles and best practices, what should your best course of action be? A. Warn the staff member. Do not do that again and move on since no harm was done. B. Immediately report the incident to the organization's privacy officer and follow the organization's incident response policy. C. Monitor the staff member's future access to ensure no further violation occurs, but take no other action. Or D. Speak with the staff member's supervisor to resolve the matter informally. So the answer is... B, you should immediately report the incident to the organization's privacy officer and follow the organization's incident response policy. So a, a privacy officer is also known as a data protection officer and a chief privacy officer. It's a professional responsible for managing and overseeing the organization's compliance with the privacy laws, regulations, and internal policies related to the protection of the personal and sensitive data. Data in transit can be protected by what? Hashing, AES, logging, or a radius server? So the answer is B, AES, Advanced Encryption Standard. Uh, it's the most commonly used encryption. It's a symmetric key encryption algorithm, and that means that both keys are the same for both encryption and decryption. If it's symmetric encryption, both keys are the same. Now, hashing, that's used for integrity and to ensure the data has not changed. I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Now, logging, that keeps track of who logged in and what they changed. And a radius server, that is an authentication server, which provides centralized authentication, authorization, and accounting. So that's AAA, authentication, authorization, and accounting. So let's take a look at our hashing lab. Okay, so we're going to go to PowerShell. Oh, don't mind that in the back there. <laughs> and we're going to type in this command here, git-filehash. Git-filehash. We'll move this over so you can see. Okay, now you want to type in the dash path. And then the best way to find the path, um, either you know it, 
or you can right click the file that you want and go to copy as path, come over here, control V. All right, what's the rest of the command here? Dash algorithm. And then you can see it gives you all the different options here for the algorithms. And we're going to use SHA-256 as a common hashing algorithm. Get file hash. Right error. Why is that? Let's take a look. Uh, the reason why it's not hashing is because the file is open. So let's go ahead and close that and come back to PowerShell. Push the up arrow and now it can run the hashing algorithm. So this is a unique hash. If any of the information changes, then the hash is going to completely change. And I'll show you an example of that. So let's go ahead and open up this file that we just hashed. And I'm just going to add in one letter, a T, save it, and then close it. And we're going to open up PowerShell one more time. And you'll see that the hash has completely changed. So this is how you can check for integrity uh, because the information that is inputted completely changes with that SHA-256 algorithm or hash. There's also like MD5 as well, message digest or SHA hashing algorithm, what that stands for.